Hello, it's me. Um, hi, how are you? So, last time we kind of looked at um, non-renewable energy, so things like gas, like oil, natural gas, coal. So, let's talk about renewable energy, because you're probably like, well, there's lots of problems with things like nuclear power. Um, why don't we just switch to renewables? That would be a great thing. What a great idea. We can't. Um, so today we're going to look at the different types of renewable energy and we're going to kind of look at positives and negatives. I'm not sure how long this will be. So if I think the video is getting kind of long, I'll probably break it up into two things. So I'll try not to talk too much. And remember, if you need to write something down, just pause the video, write it down. And I'm, I'm still going to be here. Um, so let's start with solar. Our good friend, Mr. Mr. Golden Sun. Okay. So what's the good and bad about solar? There is passive and active solar, and I'll tell you the difference between the two of those. Um, and it can actually be very effective, um, and using it is low cost. Um, in some senses, there's low cost. It's coming down now. It used to be extremely high cost to um, to make these solar cells and everything, or to um, make a house that's energy efficient um, with solar. So let's take a look. So to produce high temperature heat and electricity that was very high cost to just kind of warm your house a little bit in certain areas wasn't as high Let, let's look at it so we're going to look at the difference between passive and active solar so here's um passive solar versus active so let's take a look so in a passively heated solar house um you have your in here in the north northern hemisphere you have a bunch of windows um facing south. Why? Because that's going to get direct sunlight every day, all year. Um, so, and in the winter, the sun angle is going to be lower because of the tilt of the Earth's axis. And anyway, the, the sunlight's going to go directly in. But in summer, you don't want that direct heat because it'll heat up your house too much. It'll go onto the roof. So basically, you have like large windows that are going to let in sunlight in a very specific way they're going to trap heat in um it's going to be heavily insulated to keep the heat in and then in the summer you're going to have ways for the heat to escape but active solar this is what you're probably thinking of when you think solar power you have like um like a like a, a solar cell like one of those solar panels on the house um it's going to collect sunlight energy and somehow there's going to be some machines that's going to turn that into like electricity or heat so something like this. So in Colorado, where my brother used to live, you'd have you'd have some homes. Now remember, some places in Colorado are up like on a mountain, and can get like a lot of direct sunlight for a lot of the year. So you can see there's lots and lots and lots of windows, and even if it's very cold outside, you could sit here and probably be toasty warm because of the way it's letting the sunlight in and trapping the heat. Um, and if you look here, here's some active solar panels up on the top of some buildings. This is an area in China where they're trying to use less um, non-renewables and switch to things like solar. So let's look at our trade-off. So this is this is the same thing. It's just bigger so you can see it. So pros and cons. If there's some reason that you might need pros and cons, here, here they are. You can always pause and look at them. So the energy that you get from this um, can be pretty high. Um, there's very low emissions of CO2 and other air pollutants when you're using it um, to make things like the solar panels. That's where you get your emissions. There's not a whole lot of land disturbance to do this. And there, with passive, the, the cost is moderate. It's not crazy. Um, so what's bad? You need access to the sun 60% of the time during daylight. So you need to live in a sunny area. So where I'm from in Buffalo, New York, you really cannot have this as your main energy source because it's gray there all the time. Even in the summer, it's gray. Um, the sun can be blocked by trees or other structures. If someone builds something in the way, well, then your solar power is ruined. Um, so if you have an active solar system, it costs a ton to install those still and to maintain it, you need to call a special company to do that. Um, and you'd need a backup system for cloudy days, rainy days, that sort of thing. So you can't just rely on the sun. 
Um, and then here's the world availability of direct solar energy. So if you, we need like about six hours a day. So you have to be at least in the orange, probably better in the gold. Um, so like there's a lot of areas of the planet that aren't good for that. Like where am I from? Up here. Yeah. Look at that. Look at how many like hours of sunlight, like the good kind. Yeah. It's cold up there all the time. Um, even us here. We're in this red, so we're still not in the prime where we happen to be of like solar energy. You have to be in somewhere like a desert, a desert. Um, so what about here? Like I said, here's where I'm from, uh, right about there. Um, so it's actually moderate. Yeah. Okay. The person who made this map didn't live up there. Okay. That's all I'm going to say here, um, where we are actually here, this says we have some very good solar energy. And I, I do agree with that. Like, um, it's way sunnier here than where I grew up and it's sunny and at least not cloudy most of the time. Um, so you can cool buildings naturally. I mean, that's, I hope that's obvious. Open a window, use a fan. Well, I mean, that still takes electricity. So um, you could use high efficiency windows um, or an awning that's going to put shade there or have a light colored roof. So there's the ways that you can cool a building naturally. Um, and we can use sunlight to make high temperature heat. So if you live in Buffalo, New York, and you need it to be at least 65 inside and it's like 20 out, you can do that. You get a solar panel. It's going to collect sunlight and boil water and generate electricity. Um, and look at this stat. 1% of the world's deserts could supply all of the world's electricity. That's how much sunlight energy hits in some of these desert areas like the Sahara. But you'd require large amounts of water. Um, for why? To cool the equipment. So you end up with low net energy with how much energy you have to put in to build and take care of these systems. Um, so here's a, uh, a solar power plant in California where they have on um, these solar panels just to collect heat, sunlight in this desert area. So let's look at some trade-offs for trying to use solar power to make high temperature heat and electricity. Um, so there's moderate environmental impact because you're in this desert area. You have to dig up the materials to produce these. It doesn't directly emit CO2 and other pollutants. So no CO2 comes out of this thing right there. Um, I thought that was my child. It was a cat. Um, and it's a lower cost if you have um, like a natural gas turbine as a backup. Okay, so if you're using natural gas as a backup, you have like lower costs. So where are some disadvantages? By the time you build all this stuff and put the energy to cooling it and doing everything you need, you don't, like you put a lot of energy in to make this, and so you don't get a lot out, and it costs a lot still. You need a backup. Then you have to use a lot of water to cool these things. So there are trade-offs for using solar power. Um, that's why we don't have solar powered everything. Um, but you have lots of solutions. So here's someone using a solar cooker. I think Miss Newsom used to do a thing with her math class where she would take people out and cook hot dogs on a solar cooker that you guys would make. If you see her, you'll have to ask her. I thought that was a thing. Um, but so we can use sunlight to produce electricity. And I think this is where a lot of people are like, hey, Let's um let's use solar panels for everything. Sun's great, which it is. I mean it is, but but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So you can use one of those solar panels to convert the sunlight energy into electricity. Um so the way that the solar cells are designed, sunlight will hit a cell and release an electron. So it it don't don't just worry about that. It releases electrons into wires and it generates electricity. The movement of electrons is electricity. Um so those solar cells could be put on roofs and then have a lot of different, see it was a cat, it wasn't my child. Um, so here's a solar array in Niger in West Africa. So you have like this really small, really remote village, but they can still get electricity and power because of these solar cells. They don't have to necessarily be hooked up to a major grid that helps in like countries that are still are developing that don't have like a really strong infrastructure. Um, here's one in Arizona which can su supply um, electricity to an area around there. <laughs> um, here are some problems. It costs a lot of money. You have to be in a sunny desert. Um, you use fossil fuels to produce these things, so you still need to rely on those non-renewables still. Um, and then the solar cells themselves contain toxic materials. So once they start to break down or be not useful anymore, um, 
then what are you going to do with the toxic material? Um, so to get the cost down, it needs to be mass produced. So the government needs to subsidize this like they do with coal and oil. Um, you need to find newer designs that make them more efficient that we can produce cheaper because that's the only way we're going to get the cost down. Um, and we've been making more and more solar energy as time goes on. And that number I'm going to say is just going to keep going up. Um, so, so that's kind of what we talked about. And you can pause this and look at this, but I'm not going to go into detail about just solar cells. Let's talk about water power, hydropower. Um, okay, now don't, don't be weirded out. There's um, a documentary that I showed to AP Environmental Science last year called Dam Nation. Okay, We're talking about dams, hydroelectric dams. Um, so that's like a, something that we build. Beavers build them too, but we build them. Um, and then we control the flow of water through these turbines and then generate electricity. So we can use dams, the tides, ocean waves to generate electricity. But there's actually a lot of environmental concerns about producing these things. So how does it work? We use the kinetic energy, so the movement of water energy, to turn a turbine to generate electricity. It's indirectly a form of solar energy because that's going to cause these tides and currents to flow. Um, and that's the world's leading renewable energy source. There are hydroelectric hydroelectric dams all over the world. There's one near where I grew up, near Niagara Falls. There's a huge one. Actually, they were able to, when my mom was little, they turned off the falls. They like actually shut off the water and you could like walk where the falls were and see it all dry. Actually, that's pretty cool. You could always look up a picture since you're on the internet right now of Niagara Falls with the water turned off and you can see what it looked like. They did it. I don't know why they did it. I don't remember. It was probably maintenance or something. Anyway, um, so let's take a look at what happens. So we build this big thing called a dam. We, the water in this river then sort of builds up and up and up and we regulate how much comes through. It turns these big turbines and that's going to generate an electric current and then that's how you get your power. Um, so good things. Um, you get irrigation water for cropland. You have a reservoir of drinking water for, and you can use that for fishing and recreation. It's cheap all things considered. And then downstream it reduces flooding unless, unless it breaks. That's a bad thing. Um, but so what happens up here? Well, remember this used to be a river. So up here, this is flooded now. So any forest, any cr little critters that were living up there, their home is gone. Okay. Because this area is now flooded where it was a river. It's now turned into sort of a lake. Um, you lose a lot of that water through evaporation. So you actually locally change the weather patterns. Um, so downstream, you, there's less silt and um, nutrients that are coming through because it's getting stuck in this reservoir of water. Um, so the downstream areas are less fertile. Um, there is risk of horrible floods. So before where you might have like a flood, which is terrible. Um, now if this dam were to crack or break, you have a devastating flood that will definitely kill people and definitely like ruin people's home and land for a long time. So that's a problem. Um, so if this is just how it works. Like I said, here's your reservoir. There's the intake that's controlled. How much is going to go through? It's going to spin this turbine. Um, and it's going to generate electricity. That's it. Pretty simple. Um, so let's look at advantages and disadvantages of hydropower. You can get a lot of energy. Um, there's untapped potential. There's rivers everywhere. It's low cost. I'm, I'm already liking this. There's low emissions of CO2, except for when you have to build the dam. Well, what's some disadvantages? Well, you kind of ruin the land all around. It's a huge dis displacement of land. There's a lot of methane emissions because there's a lot of um, biomass living things that are going to decay. Oh, speaking of that, um, what about things like salmon that need to go upstream? Or the fish that are there that they will just die. And <laughs> if they go through the dam, they just die. So you're losing life. And remember, like we're talking about environmental science that includes living things. So if we want to really think about that, there's going to be loss of life of fish and aquatic creatures. Um, and some of them are already vulnerable, like amphibians, like frogs and salamanders. They're already super vulnerable to disturbances in the water. And Having this dam here will kill a lot of them. And anything downstream from the dam is disturbed. Anything upstream is 
disturbed too because you've turned that river into a lake. That's a different biome. Can the same creatures live there? Hmm. So you can also use tidal energy. Um, so that's hydropower. So I mean like the tide, tide goes in, tide comes out. You can't explain that. That's an old meme. It's an old meme, sir, but it checks out. So, um, anywho, um, because of the gravitational pull of the moon, we can't explain it. Tides go in and out. So maybe if we have a machine, we can kind of harness that like power that's kind of moving in and out to turn a turbine and generate electricity. Um, or use ocean waves. I mean, the ocean's going to generate waves. Maybe if we put something there, we can generate electricity. There's not a ton of good sites, costs a lot, and equipment gets damaged by storms and like just the ocean itself. Remember, there's like salt in there. Um, let's talk about wind power, and then I think I will end the video and then do another one with the other renewable energy sources. Um, I kind of like wind power. Um, secretly in my room, uh, hanging up on my refrigerator, I have a um, superhero that won a... Um, debate of who is the greatest renewable energy resource last year it was wind um a really cool looking wind powered superhero one um it was really great everyone did a really good job debating so um wind is the reigning champion right now so let's talk about good and bad things about wind power um if we include the environmental costs of using energy resources in the marketplace so like the cost that it takes out of the environment digging things up blowing up a mountain um, making the, uh, a river into a lake and building a dam. Wind would be the least expensive and least polluting way to produce electricity. So, um, but, but um, we never include the environmental costs of energy when we are paying for our energy resources. And they never really talk about it. So we need to talk about it. Okay. Um, so wind is also an indirect form of solar energy. So the sun kind of controls a lot. Um, so how do we get wind? It's captured by a turbine and con converted into electrical energy. So you, those windmills that you see, the wind will spin them, it turns a turbine, and then you get your electricity. It's basically how we generate electricity. We turn stuff. Um, it's the second fastest growing source of energy. I'm going to look at the global potential. And then wind farms can be on land or offshore. Now where I grew up, a lot of things are happening where I grew up. <laughs> Not really, that's why I moved. But um, up there, they have been building more and more and more windmills. Some people are like, they're ugly. Okay, why don't we just rely on foreign oil then? Um, I don't think that's a good argument <laughs> to not build them. Um, there are there definitely are disadvantages to wind power, but them being ugly, I don't think is a valid concern. I shouldn't invalidate people, but I don't think it's... I don't, I don't agree. Um, so wind power has been growing and growing. See, they, I mean, I, that's what they look like. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and stare at them and make a painting of them. They're, they're not that bad. Um, so here's how they work. So it can be on land or offshore. Um, the wind blows, the windmill turns, and then inside there you have your gearbox, your turbine, and then your electrical generator, and then you have a cable that comes down and um, sends it off. So you have your wind power electricity. Um, make sure there are cows nearby, I guess. Um, here's how big they are. Here's a dude and another dude on there, like repairing it and doing whatever. So they are very large. Um, but then you're generating a lot of electricity. So we use a lot of electricity. Okay. Um, but this is, this is an important step. Solar, um, wind, hydroelectric. It's an important step towards sustainability so we're talking about sustainability and we want to like not use more power than we can produce or that the, the earth can produce because then we put a strain on the earth and the environment and then the, the environment could collapse and we're part of that and that would be bad um so most wind power installed germany united states okay spain india denmark um so this is the place where where they have the most wind power and it's growing in other countries. This might have changed in the last few years. You can always look it up to see if it's changed. So let's look at, um, we'll talk about advantages and drawbacks. So here are the drawbacks people say. So sometimes windy areas, there's not a lot of people that, that live there. So we need a, a grid, an energy grid that could move that energy without it getting completely lost by the time it gets to people. 
and winds go away. It's not always windy, so you need backup, just like with solar. How are you going to store it? It kills migratory birds, which that does suck. Um, I think there was, what was it the common turn? I think there was an issue with that one, um, smacking into some of these windmills and their mig migratory routes. And not in my backyard. Some people are like, yeah, windmills are great. I don't want to look at them. Okay. I don't agree, but okay. So let's look at these trade-offs. Remember, you can always pause, write some things down. Um, it's not going away. You get moderate to high net energy. Okay, we're getting a lot of energy. It's widely available. The electricity cost from this is low because you're just really like paying for the maintenance to build it and people to work on it. Okay, wind other than that is free. There's little or no direct emissions of CO2. It's easy to build and expand. Okay, um, but you need a backup. For some people, it's eye pollution. I think that's okay. Um, some It does make noise, and sometimes it bothers people, and they can't really live near there, and that's, I guess, really not fair. If you're like, okay, well, we're building these, and it makes a noise, and you're like, I can't stand it, and you have to move. And then if they're not properly designed or located in the right spot, they can kill birds, which is bad. It's part of the environment, and they have a purpose. They fill a niche in there that we don't want them to be extincted. Um, how about the U.S.? You could call us the Saudi Arabia of wind power. Why that? Okay, remember Saudi Arabia is where we get all our oil. Um, so that means we have places in our country where we could have an incredible amount of wind power that could make tons of electricity. North Dakota, South Dakota, Kansas, Texas. But I'll tell you, North and South Dakota are very sparsely populated. Not a ton of people live there. Um, you could make a lot of electricity with wind farms there, and it could create lots of jobs. Here's a lot of places where we have high potential for wind power. Um, along our coast, our coastline, um, both coastlines actually, and in the Great Lakes, let me tell you something. There's not enough dots over here in Buffalo. You know why? It is always windy. Okay, I know I live there. It's cold and there's always wind. Always wind. I don't care what this thing says. Um, I mean, here's Lake Erie. Off there, right where we are, it's always windy. That's why they have windmills out there. Um, so I mean, as you go here inland, there's it's we're not a great source for wind, but in the center of our country, what what's also there? Tornado Alley. That's where you get a lot of um, tornadoes. So, what's going to happen if you have a windmill in a tornado? It's probably going to break. Okay, but there's lots of like windy areas. So this is like all this untapped potential. We could stop relying on oil and coal and natural gas and rely mostly on wind in this area of the country. Um, so I'm going to stop there. I know you're like excited, but um, we have to talk about biomass. I'll, I'll do a second video just so that way you have a pause to break and kind of like take a minute and everything. Um, so I'll be back, she said. Okay, bye.